My son and I are embarking on a lavish new life abroad, thanks to his $3 million. After the divorce, you won't be able to make ends meet, my mother-in-law sneered. Her demand for our address, coupled with the bizarre suggestion of licking her shoes, left me bewildered. What? I exclaimed. What are you talking about? I demanded, utterly perplexed. I had no clue what my mother-in-law was talking about. I admitted to myself. There had been no indication that they were planning to go abroad or that they had been saving up money. That's because I said my son got $3 million. We're going to live the high life overseas. Just the two of us, she boasted. The shock hit me like a freight train. Why would my husband leave the country? And where did $3 million come into play? Why do you want to know so badly? She taunted. Well, if you really want to know, kneel down and beg, licking my shoes, and maybe I'll tell. She sneered, her tone cutting. What's with that attitude? I retorted, my frustration mounting. Where is my husband? I demanded, seeking answers. Oh, it's very comfortable here. We're enjoying the high life with my son's three million dollars, she declared with disdain. So you're no longer needed, she dismissed me casually. I was stunned by my mother-in-law's callous words. What did it mean that my husband suddenly had three million dollars and was living a luxurious life abroad? Moreover, her treatment of me as an outsider fueled my anger and anxiety. I knew I needed to assess the situation calmly. How did my husband come into such a substantial sum of money, and could that $3 million possibly be related to? Reflecting on my life, I recalled how I met my husband at work, drawn to his positivity and warmth, leading to our marriage. His parents had welcomed me warmly, and we later had a daughter who was now 14. Growing up in poverty with toxic parents, I was determined to cherish and love my daughter deeply despite facing hardships. However, when my husband was assigned to a project in Texas, he moved away, leaving me to manage work, household chores, and our daughter alone. Reluctantly, I agreed to live with my mother-in-law for support. Mommy, when will Danny come back? My daughter often asked. It seems he'll be in Texas for a while. But don't worry, Grandma's coming over, I reassured her. Little did I know that decision would become the greatest regret of my life. You're working late again today, huh? Women who neglect their families, my mother-in-law's biting remarks greeted me daily. I have a job too, and I take care of our daughter. I defended myself, but she remained unsatisfied. When I was young, the family was everything. The thought of working outside never crossed my mind, she'd reminisce. On the day my daughter achieved good grades at school, she claimed credit. It's all thanks to me. What's the point of you? Maybe we don't need you around. Despite her minimal help with my daughter's homework, I had been the one primarily responsible for her education. Whenever I made a minor mistake in the kitchen, she would criticize me sharply. How did you and my son even survive before with such poor cooking skills? I'm doing my best, and everyone has their own way of doing things. I would retort, my patience wearing thin. She doesn't do her chores. She complained to my husband. Mom, she's working too. Please try to understand, my husband would interject. However, as we continued to live together, the relationship between my mother-in-law and me became increasingly strained. With my husband miles away, I felt more isolated. One day, feeling overwhelmed, I decided to call my husband to discuss the situation. Hello. You okay right now? Yeah, I'm good. What's up? It's kind of late. Well, your mom gave me a piece of her mind about house chores, and it's really getting to me. I'm sorry. Mom's always been a bit sharp-tongued, but maybe she has a point. Still, don't let it get to you too much. Just keep doing things at your own pace. Feeling somewhat reassured by my husband's words, I dedicated myself once again to our daily routine. However, as the days passed, the pressure from my mother-in-law continued to build, and I became more worn out every day. I eagerly anticipated my husband's return. Living with my mother-in-law without my husband around proved challenging. 
Initially, I coped by holding on to the remnants of his presence. But as days turned into weeks, her behavior became even more unbearable, and I felt crushed under the weight. She nitpicked everything I did from dawn till dusk and criticized me constantly. When I made my husband's favorite rice dish, she coldly remarked, This tastes terrible. Who'd eat this? Whenever I took a short break, she would chastise me with, How can a woman who can't even handle household chores take a break? I never had much confidence in housework. With my husband, he would just laugh off my little mistakes. In front of my mother-in-law, I realized I had no room for error. I think the way she treats me stems from her excessive love for her son. She seems unable to accept that he got married and moved away from her. This experience solidified my resolve never to become an overbearing parent like her. One day, after treating myself to a small shopping spree at a local mall, my mother-in-law got wind of it. When I got home, she was waiting for me at the entrance fuming. How could you think of going out for fun when your husband isn't home? What do you think is happening with the household chores? I thought I needed a little break. A break? In this situation, all this trouble is happening because of your ineptitude. After that, I awaited a call from my husband, hoping that hearing his voice might lighten my mood. However, the content of his call was far from what I expected. I've got some bad news. My work in Texas isn't going well. I got into gambling, and now I'm in a tight spot financially. I've also accumulated quite a debt. What? Are you kidding me? Gambling? In debt? This is way out of line. What's going to happen to our future and our daughters? I'm sorry, really sorry. I feel stuck right now, but trust me, I'll find a way. How? How do you plan to handle this? How much do you owe? I'm working on a solution. I always thought of my husband as a sincere person who would never gamble. He was always punctual for our dates, and after we moved in together, he always came straight home from work. He would always thank me whenever I cooked or did laundry. It's because he was so sincere and honest that I married him. But with him away and the constant criticism from my mother-in-law, my life felt unbearable. I can't believe someone as useless as you married my son. My heart was sinking into despair. Since my husband started working away from home, I've been constantly criticized and blamed by my mother-in-law. And my husband's recent confession deepened the despair I felt inside, his debts, the gambling issues, followed by an onslaught of more criticism from my mother-in-law. I couldn't handle it anymore, and one night I left the house and found myself crying on a park bench. Then one day, my mother-in-law discovered a secret from my past. At dinner, she used it as ammunition against me. So, I heard you used to work in a nightclub, huh? Shame on you for raising my grandchild after working in such a place. How did you find out about that? I was telling an acquaintance about how useless my son's wife is and showed them a picture of you. They recognized you. Apparently, you weren't even good at that nightclub job. In my past, frustrated with a mother who never worked and always partied, I left my family home. Struggling for money, I found work at a nightclub. It was a time from before I married my husband, a secret I believed even he didn't know. I was at a loss for words. I had never imagined my mother-in-law would discover this about my past, and she continued to use the secret to berate me further. I can't believe someone like you is the mother of my grandchild. I'll tell my son and have you kicked out. The depth of my despair grew even deeper. My married life with my husband, all the efforts I've made, and the future I had envisioned felt as if everything was taken away with her words. The communication from my husband dwindled. I feared he had started to doubt and suspect me. One night alone in my room, I reflected on my life, meeting my husband, our marriage and our current circumstances, and the constant blame and accusations from my mother-in-law. I felt I couldn't go on like this. I can't take it anymore. Whispering these words, I stepped out into the silent nighttime streets. The hushed streets echoed the hopelessness enveloping me. My mother-in-law's harsh words reverberated in my mind. My past, my secrets, and my present, all targeted by her criticism and blame. On a park bench, under a starless sky, 
I sat contemplating the darkness within my heart. Suddenly, a familiar voice approached. Mom, why are you here? My daughter sat beside me, holding my hand. Mom, don't let Grandma get to you. You work hard at an IEK company, and you've been through so much. You're strong. Thank you, but maybe Grandma has a point. Mom, Grandma's just stuck in the past. In today's world, you should be proud of any job you've done. I'm proud you worked at a nightclub, really. Yes, because it shows you've always tried your best for us, no matter the circumstances. Don't let Grandma's words control you. My daughter's words warmed my heart, and tears streamed down my face. Mom, you're working hard in IT now, right? That's amazing. I'll always be on your side, no matter what Grandma says. Filled with gratitude for my daughter's support, I found hope that we could face challenges together. In my husband's study, I took a deep breath before diving into a mountain of paperwork. I meticulously examined each document, seeking to unveil his secrets, bank statements, credit card bills, loan agreements. Slowly, my husband's financial situation became clearer. Why did this happen? I discovered numerous receipts from gambling activities, horse racing, slot machines, casinos. The thought of how much money he had squandered on these pursuits was heart-wrenching. Next, I turned on my husband's PC. The password was his birthday reversed. His inbox overflowed with collection emails and messages from friends demanding repayment of loans. Furthermore, promotional emails from gambling-related sites flooded his mailbox. I calculated how much my husband had spent on gambling. The result was an astounding $3 million far beyond my estimation. Seeing that amount, panic set in momentarily, but there was no time to lose. I began planning to secure funds to maintain our livelihood. Drawing on my savings, the expected proceeds from selling our high-end electronics and luxury goods at home, and the savings from my salary, I worked on a financial strategy. Continuing my investigation, I reached out to financial institutions to understand the extent of my husband's debts. Obtaining credit information in his name, I devised a plan a few days later. Preparations for a life independent of my husband and mother-in-law were underway. I also strategized to repay my husband's debts. Leveraging my experience in the IT industry, I joined freelance projects. Creating a portfolio and registering on a website introducing freelance jobs occupied my days. Soon after, I received my first request from a client. This will help a bit with our living expenses. In the midst of daily work, I scrutinized our household finances. Canceling unnecessary subscription services, cutting down on wasteful spending, and researching cost-effective recipes became my routine. I successfully reduced our daily food expenses and, based on insights from local friends, participated in a community yard sale. Selling some branded items and unnecessary electronics, I earned a decent amount, contributing to our financial stability. A few weeks later, my freelancing endeavors were thriving, and a sense of financial stability began to settle in my bank account, sufficient for our living expenses. Upon returning home, I discovered that all of my mother-in-law's belongings had vanished. Simultaneously, my phone rang, and it was her on the line. Oh, are you already home? I noticed our stuff is gone. What are you trying to say? My son and I are starting a luxurious life abroad with his $3 million. After the divorce, you won't be able to make ends meet. If you want our address, get on your knees and lick my shoes. Suppressing a chuckle, I responded, Actually, that $3 million is a debt. Stop joking. There's no way my son has that kind of debt. You might not believe it, but it's true. In his study, there are transaction records from banks and financial institutions, credit card bills, contracts, and more. Plus, on his PC, there are collection emails from financial institutions, messages from friends demanding repayment, and promotional emails from gambling sites. If you don't believe me, why don't you check? I just sent you photos of the evidence. Maybe you should take a look. You're lying. It's the result of him getting deeply into gambling, horse racing, slot machines, casinos. All in all, 
It amounts to a whopping $3 million. I just sent you photos of the evidence. Maybe you should take a look. I had no idea. He probably didn't want you to know, but it doesn't change the facts. In silence, my mother-in-law took a deep breath. I truly didn't know. I don't know what to say. Without another word, I hung up, resolving to begin anew. Shocked by the actions of my husband and mother-in-law, I focused on forging a future for my daughter and me. Later on, my husband called. I'm so sorry, truly I am. His subdued voice did little to quell my anger. Why did it come to this? Our family is falling apart because of you. I never thought it would come to this. But when I decided to go overseas with mom, I couldn't see a future with you and our daughter. Flabbergasted by his words, I asked, You couldn't see? It's because of your carelessness and lack of planning that our family is in this mess. I know that, but it's too late now. I made a promise to mom. Promise? What promise? One to sacrifice our daughter's future and grab a paradise just for yourselves. His silence was met with his sobbing on the other end. Calmly, I hung up the phone. The reason my mother-in-law confused assets with debts was due to a bill of $3 million that suddenly arrived at our home. She mistook the $3 million bill for a lottery-winning notice. She began planning her dream relocation overseas and approached my husband about it, unaware of his mother's misunderstanding and thinking starting a new life overseas would allow him to escape the debt problem. He accepted her proposal, mistaking a bill for a lottery notice. After that, I kept my anger towards my husband and began looking for a lawyer. I was set on preparing for a divorce, claiming compensation for emotional distress and child support. Now, a new life was about to start. A life for me and my daughter independent from my husband and mother-in-law. I consulted with a lawyer about the divorce, emotional distress compensation, and child support claims. During this period, my daughter and I spent a lot of quality time together, and she became my strongest supporter. She fully understood my decision and chose to stay with me. Hearing her words made all the hardships, disputes with my husband and mother-in-law worth it, and I couldn't help but shed tears. Meanwhile, my mother-in-law and husband were struggling with their life overseas. Despite starting a new life there, they apparently faced continuous problems due to a lack of preparation and financial issues. Furthermore, after being pickpocketed and losing their funds, they faced even more difficulties due to the language barrier. In the end, they were deported for overstaying their visas. Later, I negotiated with my husband through the lawyer. The divorce is finalized. We've agreed that he'll pay the emotional distress compensation and child support in one lump sum. Thank you. Now I can finally start a new life. But all at once, wouldn't it be better in installments? He has been took on even more debt, seemingly borrowing money from some shady loan shark. I don't know what happened to him after that, and honestly, I don't care. After being evicted from her rental property and getting pickpocketed, losing all her savings, my mother-in-law ended up homeless upon her return to the U.S. My daughter and I started our new life. Sure, it wasn't always easy, but freed from my husband and mother-in-law, we could look to the future positively. I want to live happily, collaborating with my daughter who saved me from the depths of despair.